I'm going to show you a Gentile in the Bible that destroys a core Hebrew Israelite belief. So as a Christian, you will not get deceived by the loud shouting and name calling they love to do. When I say Gentile, I mean a non-Israelite. And it's important you know this distinction because some of them say Gentiles who are saved in the Bible are Israelites living in a Gentile state of mind. This video is about a non-Israelite. Not all, but some of the most popular groups believe and teach only Israelites can get saved. This is basic, but so it's crystal clear. When you say saved, you can interchange different words and still mean the same thing. The Bible uses different words to describe believers. Believers, child of God, saved, justified, redeemed, purchased, and other words like it all lead to the same thing. The believer dwelling with God forever in his kingdom in peace. And this is available to any Israelite who believes and also any non-Israelite who believes too. Romans 10, 13, for example, says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Another example is John 1, verse 11 to 13, which says, He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of man, but of God. I didn't even want to mention any verses yet because I found many of them like to go on tangents. I saw one video where this guy was responding to me. He stopped the video and spent like 30 minutes on something I said, but I say the thing myself in the next 30 seconds of the video. But all you need is one Gentile example to debunk this false Hebrew Israelite teaching. And that one person is Rahab. They will laugh when they hear Rahab, but they don't have any good responses to the New Testament passages that talk about her. They miss what these passages mean and downplay it. And this is why you will find they avoid talking about Rahab as much as possible. I've done a couple of videos in the past talking about Rahab. And apart from a couple of response videos I watched recently, there's not much. Most of the stuff these Hebrew Israelites say about Rahab is irrelevant. Before I continue, I need to mention a few important things. These are the most common things you will find as a defense against Rahab's salvation. Number one, Rahab was not a Gentile, but an Israelite. This is so much of a joke of an argument, you find other Hebrew Israelites rejecting this. Number two, this was not salvation, this was only protection while on earth. This is the most common response I found, but also weak. To believe this, you must reject the clear interpretation of the passages I will show you in this video. It's amazing to me, this is the main public response. Number three, a Bible writer cannot say somebody saved. This is strange. Scripture comes from someone inspired by God. Of course they can. Number four, there were two different people. This is the worst and doesn't even warrant a response. But by looking at the passages in today's video, you can see they all speak of one person. Number five, the passages I mention are not God's word. You're not going to hear many say this in public, but you are forced to do this if you accept what the verses say, but hold to Israelite only salvation. This is why I liken it to two bags. You have the Christian bag and the Hebrew Israelite bag. Both have a bunch of balls in it, which represent the scriptures. Christians must take everything in their bag. We don't get to say, we don't like this or don't like that. We cannot throw any out. We must, take, we must make sense of everything in the right context. Then you have the Hebrew Israelite bag. They distort or take out passages that do not fit their doctrine. All five of these responses, by the way, are laughable. None of these arguments deal with the passages I will mention in this video. No Hebrew Israelite can deal with Rahab. And let me say one thing. The Old Testament talks about her and gives us her history. You can make a strong case she was a believer by these passages alone. But it's the New Testament that makes it clear there's no way around it except to reject the passages as God's word. For a believer, this is a position we can never take. So this is why most use the second argument I mentioned earlier, that it's only protection on earth. They focus most of their attention on the Old Testament and ignore the New Testament. If you find a Hebrew Israelite that listens to my arguments and deals with them, send it to me. I'm going to spend the rest of this video walking through two different passages in the New Testament. We find out about her in Joshua chapter two and six, 
but I want to look at James chapter 2 and Hebrews 11 slash 12. These passages show it as clear as day. This is not only about protection on earth. James chapter 2 starts by saying, My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ of glory with respect of persons. James starts by saying, don't show partiality, don't show favoritism to one over the other. The relevance to Rahab later in this chapter is obvious, but favoritism is exactly what the Hebrew Israelites do. Verse 5 says, Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to them that love him? Those rich in faith that love God will be heirs in the kingdom. The whole point in this chapter is James showing that believers have faith in God and they show it. But let's pick up at verse 20 and work our way down. 20 says, But will you know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? This is talking about true, genuine, saving faith. Then verse 21 mentions Abraham. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? God could see Abraham's faith, but men couldn't until he did things like offer up Isaac. But the more important point here is that Abraham is justified. This Greek word dikeo means declared righteous. This is the same word used all over the Bible to talk about someone who is born again, a believer. Jesus talks about the tax collector in Luke 18, for example, who's justified, dikeo. In Acts 13, 38 to 39, Paul is preaching about sins being forgiven. He says, Be it known unto you, therefore, men, brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. You are justified, dikeo, from all things which you could not get justified by the law of Moses. Titus 3 7 says, Those justified Dikeo by his grace are made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. James is saying, Abraham's justified Dikeo by faith, which gets shown by his works. And as he started the chapter saying, Don't show favoritism, he practices what he preaches. He says in verse 25, Likewise, also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent out another way? Rahab's justified, Dikeo, the same way Abraham was. This is a letter to believers. This letter gives examples of former believers who had faith and showed it by their actions. If you are justified, Dikeo, we need to see the actions to prove it. This is why in Romans 4 it says, if Abraham is justified, Dikeo, by works, he could glory but not before God. Because we are justified, Dikeo, by faith before God, but justified, Dikeo, by works before men. God sees your heart and knows if your faith is genuine, but we don't. One of the popular Hebrew Israelite camps called Sakari responded to one of my Rahab videos. The leader calls himself Gorilla Hebrew. He said this was only about escaping death. The situation with Rahab is long before Yahweh Shai. Rahab did not believe in Yahweh Shai, Christ, right? Rahab believed that these people who were coming against her city were going to win, so she got on the winning team. So her justification came in the fact that she sold her people out for God's chosen people and allowed us to slaughter her people, yeah. right? I mean, her friends. And we just left, and we just left her house alone, right? So that's a, her friends, her family, the people she grew up with. She sold them out to be slaughtered by God's chosen people. So for that, we allowed her to live. Yep. That has nothing to do with the salvation in question that Christ is coming to bring whatsoever. It is simply being used as an example that she did something in order to obtain not being killed with the rest of of her people. This is not mean or qualify non-Israelites for anything. It is simply an example. The problem is James uses Abraham and Rahab as examples for believers to follow who read his epistle. It makes no sense to speak to believers today but use an example from the past of someone who wasn't a believer. Rahab is an example here of someone made right with God. Jesus said in John 8 that Abraham saw his day and was glad. This is why passages like Romans 4 and James 2 here talk about justification. Read James in context. This is not talking about salvation while on earth 
It's not talking about another Rahab. And it's clear Rahab is not an Israelite. James is writing inspired by the Spirit. God is declaring Abraham and Rahab as justified, saved. The only thing you are left to do is say, James is not writing scripture because the context is clear. And this becomes even clearer when we move to the next passage. They may not be bold enough to say James is not writing scripture in public often, but they are more than likely saying these things behind closed doors. You could not be in a belief system that says they preach the Bible, but rejects part of it. That's a cult. Now let's move to Hebrews 11, because most make the mistake of only talking about verse 31, but the argument is more powerful than that verse. It's amazing how many Hebrew Israelites do not even understand the argument. There was one video I saw where the person went to Hebrews 11, but didn't even touch this argument. Hebrews 11, known worldwide as the hall of faith. Faithful people from the past, like in James, are examples for us today to copy. Hebrews 11:31 says, By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not, when she had received the spies with peace. There's no one else mentioned by name as faithful in this chapter who isn't saved. The only reason she is in question is because she's not an Israelite. That is why some try to say she is an Israelite because she's mentioned in this chapter. That's called begging the question. All you need to do is keep reading. When you get to verses 39 to 40, this is what it says. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. All these people mentioned above, Rahab included, had a good report, but they all, Rahab included, did not get the promise. Let's continue. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. All these people, Rahab included, plus us, get perfected by God. This is talking about justification, salvation, perfection, born again, a child of God, whatever you want to call it. And it's even clearer when you read the next verse. The next verse is chapter 12, verse 1. It says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. As I told you in the last verse, they are not perfected without you. This cloud of witnesses will be with the Lord as we will be, because we all put faith in him and get accepted. You can't deal with these New Testament passages without twisting them or by outright rejecting them as genuine scripture. It makes no sense to point believers to a non-Israelite who is not a believer as an example to follow and believers will rule and reign with Christ. 